The ICE International is a vital link between major cities in Western Europe. You know, when it works. But when it does, city centre to city centre journeys, such as the Amsterdam to Frankfurt journey we'll be taking today, can be both fast and enjoyable. I'll be in first class for this international train trip, and the best part is, you're coming along with me. Now let's get this show on the rails! We begin today's journey at one of my favourite stations in Europe, Amsterdam Centraal Station, right in the heart of the Dutch capital. Designed by Dutch architect Pierre Cooper, who also designed the city's Rick Museum and completed in 1884, this iconic station is currently undergoing a renovation programme which should see completion in 2030. So sadly, the main entrance is blocked and things inside are, well, it more or less speaks for itself. Nevertheless, much of this station's charm and iconic design still remains inside and out despite the ongoing works. Access to the platforms is restricted by automatic ticket barriers. Regardless of whether you have an e-ticket like I do, all barriers here and throughout the rest of the Netherlands operate by scanning them on the barcode reader, something I still find lacking in other countries worldwide. Whilst not the busiest station in the Netherlands, Amsterdam Centraal is still the second busiest, seeing over 192,000 passengers per day, and still stands as the country's most visited Rick monument. The underground subway not only contains the majority of the station's shops, it's also used to navigate the station's 11 platforms. Case in point here, where I use it to reach platform 1, where our train is departing from today. Amsterdam Centraal is a hub for many national and international services throughout the Netherlands, most being served by NS, the Dutch state railway operator. I actually arrived here on one of their brand new intercity trains, which I've looked at already on this channel. As can be seen, there's quite a bit of time before our train is due to leave for Germany, but that's fine as my first class ticket grants me access to the NS International Lounge, further up platform 1. Note that if you're also travelling on a first class interrail or using other international services such as Talis' Premium Class or Eurostar's Business Premier, you can access this lounge free of charge. Though I did find the lounge rather basic. There's no food available and it's relatively small. Still, the air conditioning and free bottle of water did help on this rather warm day, though you're only allowed one free drink before having to pay if you want more and there's a charge on alcoholic drinks regardless. ICE International is a joint venture between Deutsche Bahn, the German State Railways, SNCB, the Belgian State Railways, and NS. There are roughly two trains per hour from Amsterdam to Cologne and Frankfurt. One train per day extends to Basel in Switzerland, whilst the rest, like ours, terminate at Frankfurt's main station. All services use these ICE 3M or Class 406 trains, built by Siemens and Adtrans, later Bombardier, in the late 90s and early 2000s, which is arriving from the siding. Unlike the original ICE 3 Class 403, these trains were designed for use on ICE International cross-border services and are fitted with three different voltages to cover Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany, hence the M in the name, which stands for multi-system. A small number of these trains, branded ICE 3MF, were converted to operate in France for services along the LGVS, but were replaced by the newer ICE3 Velaro D on these services due to reliability issues. 16 ICE3 M trains are operational. 13 are owned by Deutsche Bahn, whilst 3 are owned by NS, though all are used in a common pool. The delay shown in the photo further highlights the poor reliability of the ICE3 Ms. To give you further facts, 24% of ICE services between Belgium and Germany were cancelled in summer 2022, which isn't particularly great for such a vital cross-border service. 
This has also resulted in the ICE-3neo order to replace the ICE-3Ms in the coming years on services to Brussels and Amsterdam, which I have looked at on this channel before. Despite this, these are one of my favourite members of the ever-growing ICE family. What's yours? Let me know below. Alright, let's get on board as we're due to depart soon. First class, where I'm sitting today, is a mixture of compartments to the right, which I'll look at later on, and further along is the 2 by one seating area, where I'll be sitting. Now it's time for us to go through our route for today. Our ICE international trade will make two calls in the Netherlands, at Utrecht and Arnhem, before crossing the border into Germany to stop at Duisburg and Dusseldorf, before reaching Germany's fourth largest city of Cologne. Then at speeds of 300 km per hour, we travel on the Cologne to Frankfurt high speed line, to eventually reach Germany's financial capital at around half past eight this evening. Let's hope our ICE 3M makes it, so sit back and enjoy the ride. Our departure from Amsterdam Central is on time at 16.38 Central European time. The journey between Amsterdam and the German border is on the classic line, which operates much slower compared to the routes we take in Germany. However, from my experiences, navigating Amsterdam's urban area is quite enjoyable as we work our way out of the city. This part of the Amsterdam to Arnhem line is one of my favourites. Not only do we pass some stunning Dutch countryside, we also run alongside the Amsterdam Rhine Canal to the left, the entire way to Utrecht. I definitely picked a good day to travel with this amazing weather, which further enhances the scenery of the line. We now travel over the canal via the Werksporbr Bridge, which was opened in 2002 following the doubling of the track on the Amsterdam to Utrecht route. Amsterdam bound trains use the older Demke Sporbr Bridge just next to this one, constructed in 1966. Utrecht Centraal, our first stop, is the largest and busiest station in the Netherlands, despite being the country's fourth largest city, owned principally due to its central location, and as can be seen here, our service is about to get incredibly busy. In an attempt to counteract overcrowding and passengers being left behind, NS and Deutsche Bahn introduced a reservation fee of €4 Euros on ICE international services for interrail travellers between June and August 23 to ensure better control of passenger loadings. As we head towards Arnhem, let's check out the features of our ICE, starting with the seat. The comfort's acceptable for a first class product, the headrest and leather maquette are a nice touch too. Both sides have foldable armrests and on the side closest to the window appears to be an entertainment system, though I was unable to tell if it still worked. The legroom is incredible with plenty of space, and if you're on the shorter side, you may appreciate the footrest just in front. Aiding the legroom is the recline function. Just pull the lever and slide forwards and backwards to adjust. A reasonably sized tray table is also present and below this is a storage net for small items and clothing that you may want to use the retractable coat hanger here. A standard European power socket is just below the entertainment system and a small bin is underneath the seat. No, that is not my coffee cup. Just above the dot matrix seat reservation display is a small reading light, and finally, there's a see-through blind to reduce the sunlight if needed. A rather nice interior for a 20-year-old high-speed train. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. As I mentioned before, 300 km per hour is not reached in the Netherlands. This is only reached on the HSL Zoud to Rotterdam and Brussels, which ICE services completely avoid. We are instead limited at 161 km per hour, though 140 is the limit of this section to Arnhem. Our last station call in the Netherlands is Arnhem Central, the ninth busiest station in the country. 
Navigating out of the city limits into Zevenar, Caesars crossed the border into Germany shortly afterwards. Whilst this isn't present by way of a sign, the best way to see this is by observing the subtle changes in the overhead catenary, which are just about noticeable crossing between the two countries. Okay, let's do a walkthrough of this ICE train. First class consists of two out of eight coaches on board, while standard is five out of the remaining eight. This is in a 2x2 two two configuration featuring tables and airline style seating. Some private compartments, like in first, are also available, though I couldn't get a good look as these are all fairly busy. There are two things I love about ICE interiors. One is the wooden decor, which gives it a classy feel, and the other is where we're heading now, the board restaurant. This is what makes ICE trains unique to other high-speed trains in Western Europe. A full meal service is available on board in a very pleasant environment, though it was standing room only for me to drink my water and lemonade. Whilst food and drink is not complimentary in first class, you're able to order at your seat using the QR code. I've linked the menu in the description below so you can view the offerings for yourself. Oh, and whilst I'm at it, here's a look at the first class compartments as I promised earlier. Perfect if you're travelling in small groups or if you want to mingle with other passengers, though I can imagine most people want more privacy using these. Our first calling point in Germany is Duisburg, which is a good time to let you know that subscribing to me is free and the best way to support my work on the channel. Thanks! Most lines in Germany aren't fully high speed. A lot tend to be upgraded conventional lines that have maximum speeds of between 200 to 230 km per hour. Case in point the one to Dusseldorf, which is capped at 200 km per hour. Dusseldorf, the sixth largest city in Germany and the second largest in the North Rhine-Westphalia region after Cologne. Whilst the station leaves little to be desired, I promise the city itself is amazing and worth a visit if you get the chance. As we approach Cologne, we can see the Lanxess Arena, the home of the Kona High, which, with its capacity of 18,500, is the largest ice hockey arena outside of North America and can even accommodate 20,000 people at concerts. We also pass the city's second busiest station, Code Messe Deutz. ICE services tend to use the lower level platforms to avoid reversing at the main station close by, but being a tourist train, our service calls there to provide greater connectivity between major cities across Europe. The approach to Köln Hauptbahnhof sees us passing the magnificent Hohenzollern Bridge over the River Rhine. This is the most used railway bridge in Germany, carrying over 1,200 trains daily. This bridge also carried road traffic in its heyday, but significant damage after World War II restricted it to rail and pedestrian traffic only. Crossing the bridge, we have the perfect view of the equally magnificent Kona Dome, or Cologne Cathedral. My first visit to Köln Hauptbahnhof was my first time in Germany, having arrived on a Thales service from Paris. This station is arguably one of the ICE International's most popular stops. Services from Brussels run through here towards Frankfurt, whereas Amsterdam services such as ours need to reverse here before making the final leg of the journey to Germany's fifth largest city. We then redo the Rhine crossing to make our way towards the Cologne to Frankfurt high speed line. And we pick up speed temporarily before making our only stop on the line, Zigborg Bonn. Located in the town of Zigborg in the North Rhine-Westphalia region of Germany, it's connected to Bonn 
one of Germany's oldest cities and the historic capital of West Germany from 1949 to 1990 through the Zigborg line of the Bonn Stadtbahn. The last thing to check out on board is the toilets, so let's go for a standard one this time. Okay, door locked and we can begin. One thing that makes the ICE stand out on Dutch services is the cleanliness of the toilets. I don't think I've seen an ICE toilet look unacceptably dirty from my experiences riding them. Everything works as it should, so that's a thumbs up from me. Okay, let's head back and experience the Cologne to Frankfurt high speed line in full. This line has literally halved journey times between two of Germany's five largest cities, thanks to its top line speed of 300 km per hour. The line is an absolute roller coaster owing to its many gradients, which makes it the perfect place to show off the best feature of the ICE3M, the see-through driver's cab. The first shot shows the rear cab whilst at full speed down the high speed line whilst the second one shows the front cab and the driver as we run alongside the A3 Autobahn towards Frankfurt. Whilst this is fun, it's worth noting that drivers also have the option of frosting the passenger view of the cab, though this is largely down to the preference of the driver. We now begin to slow down as we exit the high speed line and arrive into our penultimate stop of Frankfurt am Main Flughafen Verbundhof or Frankfurt Airport Long Distance Station. Having opened in 1999, the station forms a key part of the Cologne to Frankfurt high speed line and is the busiest station in Germany to serve an airport, serving around 23,000 passengers daily in normal traffic. Passing the river Main, where Frankfurt got its name, we now come to the end of today's trip. What are my thoughts? Well, fortunately, I had no issues today and it was a pleasant journey. The ICE3Ms are great when they work and offer a smooth and pleasant ride that's difficult to rival, particularly on a plane. As for the price, my first class ticket cost me €95.90 through the NS International website, which is in line with the likes of Talis Premium, though I would have liked to see Deutsche Bahn provide some form of free catering for this price, even if it's small. I also can't wait for the ICE3Neos to start on the ICE International. As much as I'll miss the ICE3Ms, they'll really give the service the reliability it needs. Anyway, my city centre to city centre journey ends with an acceptable, well for Germany, three minute delay into Frankfurt's main station. Now it's over to you. What are your thoughts on the ICE International? Have you used it before? Let me know below. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Please like and share it to aid the channel's growth and do consider subscribing and enabling notifications for more content such as this every week. Our ICE now heads back to the depot to end its day, and that's my cue to do the same and head to my hotel, ready for a fresh day of travelling in the morning. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.